so we're back with the Honda once more. Uh, this thing started running real good. Uh, the smoke finally cleared away, burnt out the stuff uh, out the exhaust. Um, now we're gonna work on getting some brakes on it, and we're gonna get the clutch going. And picked up some more Amazon goodies. This is uh, supposed to be universal front brake and clutch master cylinders. They sell them in a set. And it says it's supposed to fit a Honda. It's brand new. It's got the, the brake switch and uh, the safety switch on both of them. It's even got the spot where the mirror goes. So it's going to be right side and left side. I don't know which one is the clutch. Well, yeah, I do because that'll be blah, 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 blah. It's got to face out. So that will be your right side because the eyeglass has got to face out. And this will be the other side. So I don't know if you see that there. But they're a matching set. Uh, I think they were like thirty something dollars. I mean, that is a hell of a deal if they work for what we want to use them for. I mean, you couldn't buy OEM stuff that cheap. But this one here is completely frozen. This is the clutch for the hydraulic. It's got the switch on there. You see the mirror screws in there. The only problem, I think the line goes on the back side, not here, but I don't think that's too much of a big deal because you got enough holes stretch around. And then this is the front brake. It's got the switch in this one. You see the mirror goes up there. Same thing, line will just go on the front side. Actually, there's a spot there. So these things, you know, they stamped them a certain way. But, I mean, that's toast. I'm going to have to take the uh, uh, calipers apart and clean those because he said they were stuck when he got it. And he just unbolted them and uh, hung them to the side, which it's good the screws are still in there. And uh, I'm thinking about taking this gauge cluster apart. I cannot find one. Um, I'm thinking about just taking it off, taking it apart, and we'll clean it out, clean all the connections because the RPM gauge doesn't work and uh, uh, your gear selector, gear position, I mean, don't work and the temperature gauge don't show up. So I'm thinking about just taking it apart and we'll clean it. Maybe that'll uh, bring it back. I just got the tank sitting on here. Uh, that tank is it's toast. I mean, I've seen some pinholes in the bottom of it. I don't know if that can be fixed, but I'm pretty sure when I get the top open and I try and clean the rust out, it's going to be some more pinholes in it. Um, I don't know if it's fixable. Let's see if I can pick it up. Okay. Here's the rust on the inside. It's a shame that the tank is bad. And see if it don't fall over. But there's a couple of uh like right up in here, you might can see some pinholes there, and I seen some uh right down the middle. So it's probably gonna be some more once I clean it. Um I don't know if you can use JB Well, which I've never had luck with JB Well on metal gas tanks. Uh I don't know, putting some of that uh, sealant, that uh, gas tank repair stuff in it, if that will seal the hose up. But uh, them, them tanks, they're pretty expensive trying to find a, a, a good one that's uh, not all rotted out. And they're kind of they're pricey, so I would really like to fix this one. 
but uh, we might hunt around and find one. Um, Y'all leave a suggestion what to do with it if I haven't been found one by the time I uh, release this video. But uh, I'm going to try and put some rocks in it. First, I got to get the gas cap off. I'm going to try and clean it out and see just where all the pinholes at. We might be able to patch it. I mean, but I got to get an air filter for it because it was uh, rotted out. And uh, it's been running real good real good uh, we just gotta get some brakes and we gotta get the clutch working and uh, might be able to take this thing on a stroll around the block um, probably gonna have front brakes I still gotta order the rear brake hub which that one's completely rusted on there I'm gonna have to try and get it to someone that's got a torch and heat it up and see can we get that off get a battery for it too so uh headlight don't work which i don't know why you gotta figure that out probably just bad bub but uh anyway um i'm gonna keep wrenching on it doing what i can do like i said it's kind of like a budget thing i don't want to go hella crazy stretching the bank out on it but at least get it where we can swing it around the block maybe you know ride it you know it's been sitting up for years so just try and get it back to runnable condition probably hit it with some paint on the engine get some of that rust off of it. just try and just tidy it up a little bit so there it is so uh i'm going to keep doing what i do best and that's uh bringing stuff back gonna come out of there. Well I'm gonna have to clean that brake line out. Blow it out. So bitches it's gonna be clogged up. Look at the out So I got the brake line removed. Uh, probably gonna have to try and blow it out with something. I bet you it's probably stopped up. I'm gonna go ahead and remove this uh, master cylinder, get it out of the way. It's completely froze. I guess while I'm at it, we'll go ahead and take this handle off. See, can I get this, uh, Choke cable to work. Guess we'll clean that off. A lot, a lot of dirt. Hopefully, uh, ooh, those screws don't look too happy. Came loose. Surprisingly, I didn't think it was going to come loose.
tell them what kind of creatures is going to hop out of here. And I don't think, I think you got to pull the whole handlebar grip off. for that choke cable. Might be able to just pop it off and to see the way it's made. The choke lever is like a little ring, so it's actually on the handlebars. We can remove that piece. Try and squirt some oil in there and uh. crunchy there's the choke lever signal button works. I know because I have the turn signal going. Well, the two that's on there. I guess what I'll do is just spray some glue down in there. Maybe that'll free that cable up after it sits. I think the only thing else is over here is the horn button. Okay. Too concerned about right now. Let's get some uh, good stuff. Crusty bike. It's about broke over here anyway. It's 
it's got some frays in it, so it's not even worth saving anyway. So we'll just, I didn't see that part. We'll just slide that back together like nothing happened. I'll just get a new cable for it. It's going to break. Now I probably won't be able to get the stupid thing back together. <laughs> Just the, you gotta hook it into the ball, and as you can see, I barely got it off there. Tell you what, we're just gonna cut that. Since the cable is no good anyway, we'll just cut that part off. We'll move on to taking the clutch hose off. slave cylinder because I already know it's probably going to have a bunch of crud in it. Hopefully we won't have to buy that line because that would suck. So it's just this uh, 12 millimeter bolt. It's called a banjo bolt. Got some wetness down here. Oh, it's got some fluid in it. Oh, we'll put that back on. <laughs> it's got some brake fluid that came out. Not bad. So, it's some there, but I don't know about up here on the line. It looks kind of... clogged up. I'm still going to have to spray through it. Because where the banjo boat goes in, up there, it looks stopped up. We got to re bleed it anyway. <clears throat> Put a bucket up under here to catch this fluid. We'll just let it leak out. But at least it's good brake fluid in the slave cylinder, so. 
Um, might not be bad. Press it build up. The hole up there somewhere. Flush all that stuff out of there. Clean the banjo boat off. It's got a lot of dunking stuff on it.
the hole looks clear, so I guess we'll go ahead and put the uh, cylinder on there. And um, see what put some fresh brake fluid in there and just see. Nice brand new. Now we just gotta hook the brake line up and the brake switch, which is these two little wires, was not a I guess that's the clutch safety switch. It's not a brake switch. That don't have to be the the clutch safety switch so you can crank it while it's in gear. There's a little bit more crud on that brake line. I'm gonna scrape out of there. and falling down in the brake line. Hopefully that's not stopped up. Get a light and look down in there.
I'm gonna try and find something to stick down in this brake line up here. It looks kind of cruddy. All right, so just put some brake fluid in it and uh, put the cap back on. And we'll go down and uh, see if we can get it to bleed out down there. Hopefully, the brake line is not clogged up. I tried to clean it out, blow through it, and couldn't get the air hose to go inside of the brake hose where the banjo boat goes. Seal it off to get enough pressure. So I got the bleeder screw uh, packed open down there. So hopefully we get something to bleed out. Would be nice. It works first time without well, having to fight with it. I know sometimes you get air in those lines. So let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna close it up. Give it a couple pumps. Nothing yet. See how these aftermarket universal calipers, I mean not calipers, uh, master cylinder work. I feel like I felt some resistance. And I hate to have to buy a brake hose. Starting to feel some stiffness though. I heard some air. Guess that was up my imagination. Looks like it's starting to go down through the little sight glass. Oh, we got some rusty, rusty fluid coming out. That's good. So we got some coming through. Probably have to put some more brake fluid in it. Oh yeah, boil on out of there. Boil all that crap out. Feels pretty stiff. The true test is to crank it up and put it in gear. Oh yeah, I felt it go down then. Yeah. It's all kind of rusty stuff coming out. Need to flush all that out of there.
feels pretty stiff though. It feels like it's got some uh, something. It's definitely pushing it out the line. I'm trying to get it where we can push all that uh, crap out of there that's in the brake line. I have to refill it in a minute, it's getting empty. Let me put a little bit more fluid in it. full of rusty stuff up here. Didn't want to see that. Pretty, pretty dirty. Must have back bled back up there. She can uh, soak some of this uh, rusty stuff up out of there. Put some more brake fluid in it. It's a lot of crap. So all that stuff that was in the brake line. Pushing it, pumping back through there. Put some more fresh in it. I did feel some pressure, so that means that uh, either the slave cylinder is pushing or the Master cylinder's about bled up, but like I said, we'll have to crank it up and put it in gear and see uh, if the clutch is free on it. Pump it up. Steady pumping rusty stuff out. What if I just do this here? That's just gonna let air in. Let's just see what it, what would it push out. Look at that. It's just still clear up there. thing about these clutches you can't adjust it up on the handlebar because it's hydraulic it's not like your cable fed clutch so can't take any free play out of the Might be 
see all I can get out of there. I like to get the rust of that rust rust out. This is really boiling out of there now. Hopefully that slave cylinder is good. So I'm going to keep bleeding that out. Probably go get my Mighty Vac. See, can I suck some of that out of there? And uh, we'll get a battery, hook it up and put it in gear and see what the clutch uh, release well it's in gear
because that seal just started leaking when I started uh, pushing in on the clutch. So now I'm going to have to pull that off. I bet you there's a rod or something that goes straight through and pushes the clutch. And uh, there's probably a seal in the middle of this housing that that rod goes through. And now that we got the clutch going, hopefully that rod didn't have rust on it. And um, it just rubbed right through the uh, seal. <sighs> it's always something. Because I was wondering why it just started leaking. Every time I would hit the clutch, uh, you can actually see the oil dripping out of it. It's not brake fluid. It's actually motor oil. So, back to the drawing board on that, but at least we know the clutch works. Shouldn't have to, uh, hopefully when I take that off, the slave cylinder don't go blowing apart. Um, but we know the clutch works, we know the gears work, so I'll snatch that off and we'll try to get a seal. I'll look it up and see uh, what it's going to take to replace it. Hopefully it's just a seal we can pop out right there without uh, you having to break down the case or anything. Hopefully it's just a seal right there that'll pop in real easy and we'll be uh, good to go on that. Okay, so we got the back wheel off the bike. Um, when I very first got the bike, the brake hub was frozen on it. It won't even turn. Uh, I tried to knock it off, and you see I destroyed this brake hub. So I ordered a new one. Well, not a new one, but a... Uh, used one. Honda 700S VF 700 so we got this one uh, it's got all the shoes and everything which is good so I gotta try and get this hub off here either heating this wheel up or I got my sliding tools I don't know what this thing is it was made by I can't remember I got it off of uh, Amazon, but it's got this neat slide hammer thing that you can use. And it has all these different um, things you can put in, and as you tighten it, it's actually for a bearing that's a blind hole bearing, like if you got a bearing in a case housing and you can't get to the other side you put these little things in there and as you screw in this little thing opens up and it wedges inside of the bearing and then you hook it on the slide hammer pull it out so it's got a bunch of different attachments uh, I have to look back on my Amazon history and I might be able to put a link, well not a link, but uh, the name of the part in there and you can order one. I'm going to try and use this. I don't know if it's going to squeeze in and open up far enough. Maybe I can put the uh, hammer here on it and get it out. I really want to heat it up.
should be able to stick this in there because it's pretty deep inside of that hub. Tighten this up. I don't know if this is going to work, but I was thinking about it. I said, maybe. Might be able to get it to go in up under that bearing because up under the hub, there's this little spacer. I think, and then the bearing. I don't know if I'll be able to get it to go. Well, I know I can get the shove down in there, but. Maybe it will catch the underside of that. I don't want to pull the bearing out. Just want to get the hood. I think, yeah, see that's in the bearing there. So we're going to have to come up some. back to where we had it. If it didn't have that little shoulder on there, it'll probably stretch all the way open. This don't work. I'm gonna have to heat it up. Nah. See, it has that little shoulder on there. If that wasn't on there, this would stretch all the way open to the same diameter. Hmm. And you can't get a rod or nothing on the other side to have on the back side because the bearing is all the way up against it. Let me think. We got this one here, but that one might be too small. might be able to get it to open up that far, but I doubt it. I think I'm just going to have to take this wheel and take a torch and heat up around the outside of it. I hate to have to buy a whole nother wheel. See, the thing opens up as you turn in on the screw. Uh, kind of wedges itself open. Like I said, it's good for a bearing, but you can't get to the other side. Man. So, we're going to have to just take this wheel. And I don't have a torch here. So, hmm. 
that's what we're going to have to do. We're going to have to take this wheel and I guess heat up around here or heat up in the middle. See, can we... Uh, get those brakes to release. I bet your wheel for this thing is probably going to be a couple hundred dollars. Especially with shipping, but... Hmm. So, let me do some thinking on it. And if I come up with something, I'll show you. But it looks like I'm going to have to just get this wheel heated up around here with a torch or something. And, uh, or just heat up here on top of the brake drum. And see, can we get them brakes to release? Uh, I wish I could pull the pins out, but the pins had these little carter pins on the other side so you can't get these pins out of here that's what holds the the brake shoes in so let me do some digging and uh, we'll get back with it um, here in a minute alright so I flipped the wheel over and on this side it has uh, looks like a I guess the bearing retainer that holds the bearings inside of the wheel. I'm thinking if I take this flange off, the bearing is right there. Maybe I can remove this bearing and be able to go into this side to uh, knock that uh, hub off. Or maybe we can use one of those tools. So I think we can use our tool inside of here, get this bearing out, and then knock the other one out the other side. Either that or get this spacer out where we can get up under that bearing and pull the whole thing out. So we're going to use this tool. I think that's the, this is the one for it. Like I say, this is, you can't get to the other side of the bearing because it's completely pushed against the spacer. So we're going to use our little wedge tool. This is where these come in handy. lock in right there. Thing is holding it. So that bearing's gonna turn. So we're locked inside the bearing now. Let's turn it. I think I failed to go right up under it. So we know we're in the bearing. We're either in the bearing or in the space or both, but I do believe it's the bearing. Now we should be able to uh, use the slide hammer. There we go. Makes it a lot easier. 
So this should be the spacer. Yep. There's a spacer. I don't know what kind of grease that is. And that's the other bearing. So we should be able to knock the bearing through with the wheel hub. Set that back there. Or we can use the tool and slide hammer it out. Which, as tight as those brakes is, I don't think it's going to work. Probably have to hit that bearing. I hate to mess that bearing up too. What you gotta do, what you gotta do. I want it to work. But now I know I can get locked in up under that bearing. Flip the wheel back over. Because this thing goes in pretty far. We'll stretch it out as far as we can get it. out the other side. are stuck on that hub is not moving I do believe I'm going to have to flip it over, put the wheel up on something, and beat the other side. Those brakes, they must be really rusted in there. I can't clamp onto this anymore because I cut it so I can move the bike. trying to move. I don't know. It's hard to tell. That's when we're going to have to heat it up. It's definitely in there though. Definitely lock in or something. I can get like some PB blaster or something down in there. Might have to drill a hole. Drill a hole through this hub. Try and get some oil down in there too.
She ain't trying to move. Uh-uh. I don't know if that bearing, now I think about it, that bearing might be against a flange where it won't come out this way. I doubt it though. Because I don't think you can knock that bearing all the way through the other side. I just think it's just this hub is just, just so froze up on there. Might have to drill a hole straight through it around here and get some penetrating oil down in there. That might be able to uh, lube something, but I'm gonna try and definitely guess that bearing. I don't know if you can see in there or not. Kind of hard to see in there, but we against the bearing, though. That's for sure. Looks like to me that bearing will come out that way because it's a flange here on the inside. So maybe we'll be able to get against the bearing. knock that hub out. <sighs> Let me get this out of there. I guess trying to pull that. Oh man, I got that tight. I'm gonna have to get a ratchet. So let me see if I can uh, get this wheel up on something. Well, maybe we can knock straight through and knock the hub off that side. If that don't work, I'm definitely going to uh, take it and get it heated up because that's ridiculous. So I made me a contraption. This is actually a Polaris clutch puller tool. But I just put a nut on it, so this will go against the bearing, the inner race. See, I hope I don't destroy that bearing. Wish I had something a little bit bigger. But I can get a bearing. We have a place here in town that sells bearings, so. More money. off. Let's see the carnage. 
Well, we got a brake shoe that's stuck inside of the wheel. There's our bearing, and it feels good. Didn't destroy it. Didn't destroy the wheel. Here's one of the other brake shoes. Look at that. Shoes are completely gone. And it's got some rust up in the hub. There's the other brake shoe. It won't even come out of there. It's just stuck. I'm gonna have to chisel it out and take some sandpaper. It's funny how something like this keep it from coming out. There's the other brake shoe. So now we'll just take some sandpaper, clean that up, and uh, put the bearings back in, and get this thing back on the bike, and adjust the brakes. And we should have rear brakes because those other shoes look real good on that other uh, drum, I mean uh, hub I bought. So I'll get this cleaned up, get it on the bike, and uh, we'll try to get the front brakes working I gotta put the new master cylinder problem oh well I know I'm gonna have to take the calipers off to clean them because he said they were stuck when he got the bike many years ago so hopefully I don't have to buy a rebuild kit for them but uh, my main concern was the rear brake uh, at least if we try and ride it we'll have some kind of brake so I'm gonna get all this stuff cleaned up and uh, get it back on there and we should be good to go. All right, so I got the clutch slave cylinder off and that's the seal that was leaking the oil out. It has a little weep hole in the case here. So when that seal starts leaking, it runs out the hole straight to the ground. This is the seal, the new seal. That's the part number, I don't know if you out there would need it. It's actual Honda part. Let's open it up. And look how that one looks. So that's the seal that goes there. This is the clutch rod that actually pushes the clutch through the motor. It had some pitting. It actually has some rust here and a little bit of pitting. So what I did was uh, cleaned it up but I'm not going to put this part where the seal goes because I'm scared it's going to rub out the new seal. We're going to put this in that's nice and shiny and clean uh, through the seal part. So it actually go in that way. So now I just got to get the seal out and how I'm going to do that is I'm thinking I'm going to take the wood screw um, first I really need to get I need to get all this trash out of there because I don't want it <clears throat> getting the hole is resting. I'm a little concerned about the slave cylinder because it's got like some crud on that seal there but it don't look like it was leaking. I think actually water just got in here like the sensor, the neutral safety switch sensor. Water got in there and uh crudded it up because the bike was actually leaning on the right hand side so this side here 
was facing up in the air. So water was just running right back through these little weep holes on the case and sat in there and rusted everything up. Let's get this thing cleaned out a little bit. The gasket is still on there and intact. I don't really want to disturb it because I forgot to get one. So we'll put a little, just a little silicone on there. Seal it. Silicone, silicone. Permatex. It should be clean enough there. I'm clean the slave cylinder off. Because it actually works. I guess if I start noticing brake fluid loss that the uh, slave cylinder is leaking, which they got a rebuild kit for it. So, let's see if I can take this screw whatever I did with it. Take this wood screw and Gently run it through that seal. Man, that thing is just real soft. Look at that. Can I just pop that out? <clears throat> Might be so right that it just popped right out. That seal is totally, totally rotted out. It's just rusted. Don't want it to fall back in the motor, that's one thing. That seal is... It is gone. Let me see if I can get, I don't think I can get a seal puller in there. Nothing left. It don't look like it's nothing left of the uh, metal part of the seal. I hope the case is not messed up. Doubt it though. It's a lot of rust. Seal puller in there. Just kind of rake out some of this crap.
never know what you might find when you're working on this old stuff, especially when you've been laying out in the field. Disintegrated. Not the outer part, but the the actual metal part of the seal. There ain't nothing left of it. Ah, messed the gasket up. Oh well. Like it ain't nothing left. It's Try not to get it in there. You know, I'm gonna have to pick it out of there. I don't even see the little springy part of the seal anymore. It's gone. Gotta clean all that out or the seal won't ever sound like NASCAR race outside. tell the hole is rotted in half or where's the back part of the seal that oh, that's that right there is I know that's not the seal hopefully this is the right seal That looks too big. Something don't look right. Okay, here we go. There we go. Ah. Look at that. That's some kind of ceiling or something. <laughs> That's part of the seal. And this is the metal part of it. Try 
try and get out as much as I can, but I don't know. Some of it's just gonna be in there. I guess it'll just go down through the oil ports and get in the oil filter. But I think I still will now fit. Nope. It's too big. It's the wrong seal. Darn. Wrong seal. Back to the drawing board on that. I was hoping this was going to be it when I looked it up. According to the part number. But it's. I'm starting to wonder does the seal go in from the other side? Because the hole is actually bigger on the other side. And that will make you have to pull this whole housing out. The whole thing. You can see there's a lip here. That would be just stupid if the seal goes in that way. That's probably why it was so hard to get it out. So the housing that goes over the dry shaft and all of that will have to come off. Why did they not put it on the outside? I'm going to have to do some research on that because I'm just noticing that uh, it has a lip. right here and you can't put the seal in that way it's got to go on the inside and you sure ain't squeezing it in there man oh man so I'm going to do some looking up like I say hopefully I don't have to pull this housing off because there is some Allen screws here. One, two. There's a bolt there. You don't have to pull the water pump. But I think you just have to pull this cover off. And put the seal in that way. Then put it back together. So. <sighs> Let me do some reading up on it. And uh. If we gotta do it, we gotta do it, because now we're too far in it. So, back to the drawing board. So I did some reading online and watched another YouTuber video. And what he did is like I'm starting to do is you take a Dremel and you uh, make you a keyhole and uh, you can stick the seal in there sideways so you will go straight in and then you take an allen wrench shave it down stick it through the front and then pull it through the only other way to get that seal out is you have to pull your drive shaft which is in the swing arm and I have read you have to pull the water pump you have to pull this whole housing off here to put that seal in through the back side and then I think I also read you might have to drop the engine um, but I'm going to do like the other guy did and I also read up that some more, more people did it like that I'm just going to shave this down now, I don't have a Dremel tool but I got a a uh, bit like what's on a Dremel tool. Uh, it's like a, I don't know what you call this, shaving rock.
put a piece of paper towel in there to keep the metal from or aluminum from going through. You gotta do quite a bit of shaving so that seal Looks like it's starting to widen out. Almost. I think I've read one guy said it takes like an hour to get it. see it. It's pretty wide though. Oh yeah, it's starting to go in now. i say a little, little wider because you still got the lip on each side that's going to hold it. You don't want to overdo it because it might leak around it. It's starting to go in there though, but I think that's going to, I think that's going to work. We just have to shove it in there and uh, take the Allen wrench. I'm going to shave it a little bit more on this bottom side. Oh yeah, she's going in now. So, let me get an Allen wrench. First I gotta, I guess I take the shop back, suck all that out of there, and get the paper towel out. And then I'll take an Allen wrench and cut it down. And you want the Allen wrench to be 
where it's gonna rest against the back part of the seal, the metal part of the seal. So it'll be right across here on the outer edge, not in here, because you'll pull it through. So uh, let me clean all that up and get everything ready and um, we'll get it in. All right, so I got the Allen wrench cut down and uh, I'm thinking about putting just a little silicone uh, around it just a little bit. That'll help it kind of pop in there. So it's in there. So now we just gotta grab it. With our so called Allen hook. I would say put a little dab of silicone around the hole. Also, that'll help it kind of slide in there just a little bit. Or you could have used oil. Just something that'll kind of help it. Not easy. The seals are crooked. It's funny because I can't see what a what the Allen wrench is. It's coming, but here it comes. I was hoping the silicone was going to let it. Pull them out there, so I guess because it's trying to go in at an angle. <clears throat> Don't want to pop in there, it's in there halfway, but. See, can I push it out some without yeah, don't want to move. Getting it straight in there is the problem. Should have put a little bit more sealing on there. 
Oops. Oh, now I did it. <laughs> Sit there for a minute. Let's see, can we get some more? I don't know whether to use silicone or PB blaster. I'm gonna shoot for this. It was almost there though. Get it back lined up in the hole. That's going to be the kicker. Ah, almost pulled the front side of the seal. And we had it. I just didn't want to put too much pressure on it. I don't think it's going to. videos <laughs> I think it, the silicone is what's I just don't want to come through on the side over here Come in at an angle, that's what's if I get it just a little bit straighter. It's coming, it's just on an angle. So can I turn these five strips around the other way? Be it. 
hope I'm not hitting the... Ah! Did I mess up the seal? I don't think so. It slipped. No, I didn't mess it up. Hopefully that little spring didn't fly off. <laughs> Is it going to have to ride cricket? Oh, man, that, that is not good. I hope that little band didn't fall off. It's all but in there. It's just on an angle. I can't get it to. Let me see, can I tap it? Tap it out just a little bit. I think putting silicone on there was a bad idea. <clears throat> Probably should have cleaned that hole up a little bit where it goes, sanded it down a little bit. Ugh, that seal's going to be destroyed by the time I get done. Well, I got it in there. It's on an angle, but I can't get it the rest of the way. Probably gonna have to pop it back out, clean that hole up. Sorry if you can't see, it's kinda it's kinda hectic trying to work. It's like the seal's trying to come through on a small angle. I don't wanna do that. I tried to tap it out a little bit, but it's all but in there, just it's coming.
<laughs> I think we almost got it. Sorry. <laughs> Oop. It's in there, I think. Yeah. So it's in there. Just have to tap, tap the edge back a little bit and then pull it, but it's in there, so hopefully that little, it's like a little spring that goes on the other side of the seal. Hopefully that didn't fly off, but uh, we'll get the clutch rod back in and uh, get the clutch back together. I mean, get the cylinder back on fire it up and see if we got any leaks which I don't think we will so uh, let me get this all buttoned up cleaned up and uh, we'll try it out well we got parts for the 700 finally uh, with all the shipping chaos going on let's just see what we got uh, we did get the seat in this box. I opened it and kind of browsed at it. This is the best seat I can find. It's got some tires right there, but if you see the other seat, <laughs> you'll know why I found that one. That's the best. That looks better than the seat that was on it. This seat here is trashed, so even the cushion is all messed up. That one's got good cushion until you take the cover off and you find out, but we got that, so we got the seat. And in this box here should be drum roll, please. Hopefully it didn't get damaged shipping. Which is not bad inside. So this is a 700 gas tank. Here, a little rust. Uh, the bottom of it looks good because the bottom on the other tank is trashed. Take a look inside. Looks real good. Got some uh, minor. Uh, you off of here. It's got some minor rust, but all in all, it can be cleaned. You can see in there, just some minor rust. So that can be cleaned up real good. I'm trying to look down in there. Looks real nice in there. Just some, you probably can uh, put some gas in there, swash it around. I don't see anything major. We gotta get the gas top <clears throat> off the other one. Now this right here, that looked like it was in a fire or something. See how it like melted the paint? 
So I guess this bike was, I don't know, was it in a house fire, garage fire? It's only on that side. So, so now we just gotta get the top, which I gotta take the key switch to a locksmith. See, can we get a key? But this one here has got a lot of surface rust. You can see the holes right there. It's pitted real bad. And it's just Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese. So I hate that this one's a different color, but those tanks are real rare. This was the cheapest and best one I could find. It does got a little dent there. He showed me in the picture. Not a big deal. But they got some that's <clears throat> three, four hundred dollars. This one was like, I think I bid it on it and got it for like uh, $80. Plus shipping. So we will set it up on there with the seat, get a good gander. Uh, also, we got a new battery. And as you can see, I did a little paint on the uh, side of the engine, just trying to make it look decent. Still got some more stuff we gotta do to it. I gotta still uh, front brakes. We got back brakes now. That's all fixed. So, like I said, there was a gas tank on there, the same exact color of what. The original one is, and I just, I think he wanted like $3.99 plus shipping, and I just couldn't do it. And it was in real bad shape. Maybe we can just. Get it painted. But uh, sorry about that. Thought you guys tilted up there. The side cover I got to put the emblem back on and uh, clean it up a bit. See, can we get some of the? tree sap off of it. Like I said, I really hate I didn't get the tank that was the original color and uh, I think it didn't have a scratch or anything on it but you know for what what they wanted for it and what in the you couldn't make an offer on it, so I just went with the cheapest thing. And I gotta get the pet cock working too. Hooks. Up under the gas tank. But all in all, it's a bike, right? <laughs> so I got to fix the headlight after I uh, fixed the key switch. It is 
the chrome backing is just peeling in there all the moisture got in it we got the horns uh, so anyway looks like a bike again got a good seat a decent seat <clears throat> we'll probably clean this gas tank up probably just uh, paint this gas tank black um, get rid of this stripe here just paint it black to match the black on the side covers It'll, it will blend in actually because right here on the tail section is black really just need to paint all the brown black and just be a blacked out bike but uh well yeah she's looking uh pretty swifty and uh do something about the rusty kickstand Try to get some of this rust off here. But my main concern now is uh, <clears throat> getting where we can use the gas tank and fix the front brakes. And we should be able to take this thing on a nice ride. And it got kind of cool outside now. It's been like in the uh, 30s at night <clears throat> and early in the morning. Through the day, it's like 45-ish, 55, so winter time is setting in and uh, it's going to be too cold to ride motorcycles. I mean, some people like riding them in the winter, you can, but I want to get this thing road worthy where we can uh, ride it. So, but I'm going to do what I do best and that's what it is. Uh, get the tank clean and get the petcock, which I got. And I couldn't find original fuel petcock. I found some aftermarkets, but I don't know if they'll fit. See, that's the uh, original one. It's a vacuum control. So, and it screws into the tank, and as you see, the little filter is cracked. Uh, it's got some holes in it. I'll focus in on it. But, uh, so I gotta figure that out. How I'm going to, if I'm gonna try and use this original one or and I'm going to uh, buy an aftermarket one and hope it fits. But yeah, the screen is just all dry rotted. So, and the switch is frozen on here so it won't turn. Might have to take it apart and clean it. But I don't know if it's something missing here. It's got like some threads in there and that hole right there I know this is your what hooks to the carburetors that's what hooks to the to the, your uh, vacuum but something threaded in there and there's an o-ring there so I tried to do a little research I know if you blow air in there it will blow straight out so I don't know if that's a uh, a vent so I'm thinking about just going with an aftermarket one really because Ain't nothing I can do about this screen. You don't want to get rust down in them carburetors. If it didn't lay outside, uh, well, actually, it was laying up under the seat when we got the bike. It was actually up in the compartment area. If it didn't lay out there, it would have survived. But <clears throat> but anyway, enough chitter chatter. I'm gonna try and do some cleaning up on the tank. Uh, get it where we can get some fuel down to the carburetors out of it and get it bolted back on. I gotta also put the air box back together. And uh, yeah, so hang tight. We're moving closer and closer to the street. 
after fighting with that clutch seal, finally got it in and I destroyed it. As you've seen, uh, the Allen wrench slipped and just tore the middle out of it. But I ended up ordering two more. So this, this is just a spare one. Took a couple days to get two more, but I did get it in there and got it in straight. Uh, got the new gas tank flushed out. You see, I just kind of stuck the seat and the gas tank on there. Uh, I got the fuel pet cot on. Uh, made a, uh, a fitting. It's supposed to have a drain screw here. I could not find one that same thread. So I end up uh, going to Home Depot. This is actually a uh, a uh, fitting that will go into like a uh, air tank it had the same fine threads and I found this brass cap to go on it this uh, fitting here is it's like a valve stem that will go into a compression tank and it threaded right in there and uh, I put this cap on the other end uh, just in case that valve stem start leaking it won't let the gas leak out and this petcock actually works I got the vacuum line hooked up I had to turn it to the side because this fitting was hitting the carburetor and I couldn't get it to the petcock to turn straight so uh, we got the vacuum hooked up this port here I read this is like for some kind of California emissions thing that they had on the bikes in California so we don't have to use that uh, now the battle is getting the fuel line uh, and a fuel filter because inside this petcock it don't have the screen that's on the stem that comes through up into the tank so uh, I'm going to run an inline filter, which I just made one. This is just a metal filter off of one of those universal electric fuel pumps. So I'm going to change the hose, put it there, and it'll be in the middle. And uh, I tested the vacuum. I just took the hose and sucked, sucked through it and uh, gas did come out so the vacuum is working the diaphragm in there so like I said I got the tank on I just stuck the seat on there just to see how it looked and I stuck the side cover on so it's not looking too shabby I wish I could have got the tank that is the correct color is this one but those tanks are extremely high I mean they had one on eBay that thing was like close to four hundred dollars shipping so it was the same color perfect but nevertheless we got one I mean if I have to since this one got look like it was got hot or something maybe the bike caught on fire we can always paint it the same color a black or a gold with the brown but uh one more thing uh on the gauge cluster i took it apart and tried to clean the circuit board so the gear selector or gear position gauge will work in temperature and it's just all corroded and nasty in there that thing is trash so might be able to find a new gauge cluster for it um, also looked at some headlights this headlight is trash all the reflective part in there is just rotted away and it's rust in there and you can literally see the rust piled up in there and still got to get the key switch working and do the front brakes but we do have clutch we don't have an oil leak anymore and 
So right now, I'm going to get this fuel line hooked up. Um, probably going to go ahead and rip these front calipers off because they're going to have to be taken apart and cleaned because he said they were stuck years ago when he rescued the bike. And um, so they're going to have to be taken apart. And I got a new master cylinder for them. I don't want to trust just pushing the pistons back and throwing them on there and get going down the road and them suckers lock up and throw me off the bike. So we're going to take them apart and clean them. Or we might just take them off for now just to ride it down the street. It does have back brakes. So we got all the back brakes hooked up. Nice new brake hub. So just moving right along with it. So I'm gonna get this fuel filter in line and we're gonna try and get that gas top, try and get a key made so we can put the gas top on here. Unless I just stick some in here just for now, just to ride it down the road. But um, I have seen some gas top key switch combinations on eBay and like say, stuff for this thing is, some stuff is cheap, but some of the key stuff you need is kind of outrageous, but these bikes are, they're hard to find. So I did see a set of forks on there that's perfect. This one right here, they still got some spring to them. I think this is just a wiper seal. I don't see any oil leaking out, but I bet you after you ride it, they're going to start leaking. We got to put the horns and all that back in, but uh, right now we're just worried about getting fuel to it and uh, make sure we won't have any fuel leaks. And um, that's it. So I'm gonna work on that. I got to put that cover back over the clutch master cylinder, which I'm glad it worked. Didn't have to buy one or rebuild it. And uh, we'll get the side covers on it and um, try and get this thing roadworthy all right so i got the fuel line hooked up the fuel filter see it's running on its own gas tank now too bad i don't have the rpm gauge working so i can see what the rpms are it sounds good though So our next step is going to be, uh, oh, I forgot to put the radio cap back on tight. Next step is going to be um, getting these front brakes taken care of. And also, uh, I'm going to have to just keep the cooling fan straight wired because uh, it don't come on when it gets up to temperature. I believe it has something to do with the gauges not working. So, so anyway, we're going to keep pushing forward and uh, getting closer to the road. So I got one of the brake calipers off and uh, this thing's been sitting for a long time. You can see the brake pads. They're just rusted solid. Those pistons have got a tremendous amount of rust on them. The brake fluid looks like mud. So what I'm going to do is break them down. Hopefully they're worth saving. set of brake calipers Let's see can we get the brake pads out I'm 
remove that clip and these pins should just slide out of there I'm gonna have to heat that one up because it's got a Oh, it's moving. What we're gonna do is take the brake pads out and we're gonna blow these pistons out of there and clean them up. Try and get all the rust off of them. smaller I think we're against the table we we'll have to set it up on something I, I can set it on that Long pins. Why? I don't know what's on this end. Look like it's supposed to be a dirt. I know it wasn't a bleeder screw there. Oh, it's just a plug. Thought it was deteriorated on that end. So now, get our shoes out. And they are stuck together. Look at that. Good brake shoes. limbs and everything in there get all this dirt out of there let me uh, blow this out right quick turn it tight I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to uh, crank the compressor up so we get some air pressure. Cause what we're gonna do is blow through here, and uh, I guess I'll put something here like a wrench or something, something keep those pistons from blowing out and I lose them, and uh, we'll pop those pistons out. So let me clean up the area and uh, 
Man, those things were dirty. Let's see, can I find? to blow it out but uh they're not moving sometimes you have to heat them up also hopefully I don't have to I really don't want to scar up the bore but uh I bet you I'm gonna have to heat him, heat it up a little bit. Never put your fingers <laughs> where those pistons will come out, cause you can lose a finger. I don't know if I can just go in there a little bit. I don't know. I'm going to have to heat it up. Hopefully, if I heat it up, it don't mess up the seals in there. Then I have to buy a rebuild kit. So I got a. Uh, Putting about 150 PSI to them. So, uh, let me get my mini gas bottle. If it's got any gas in it. And we'll just barely heat, heat them up right here. Get a little hot. And then, uh, and then that way, um, we can be able to blow those pistons out. All right. I think that I might be better heating the piston. Get 
too hot. Let's try that. Let me get me a glove. No. Let's crank up the air pressure.
that side there does not want to come out but this side came out I'm thinking I might be able to uh, try and tap it in there a little bit moved a little some way I can hold it and tap it at the same time that bad boy there is stuck it moved a little bit in but I don't want to go all the way in because it's got all that rust and stuff on there I don't think getting this plug out of there is going to let me get any more air to it. Plus that looks like it's just completely rotted in there. That's that one, budge. Well, it did come out. Might be able to look in there and see if this it's just full of gumminess. Might be able to blow through the side, I doubt it. We'll try. No, that's just coming through there, so that ain't gonna work. Putting PV blaster in it is not going to work either. Probably going to have to clean the outside of this piston over here up a little bit. I don't, I'm scared to knock it all the way in there because if I do that, it'll never come out. Let me try heating it up one more time. Hot too. That other piston is it's pretty much stuck in there. Well, 
what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna try and clean all this rust off of uh, this one. Maybe I can knock it back in there a little bit. I just did, but I'm scared to fully do it. I don't want this one to come all the way out because then I won't be able to uh, blow this one out of there. That one came right on out of there, which I knew it would. So I'm going to clean that up and then um, see can we we'll get it out of there. So a guy got to thinking, why not use our bearing uh, puller with the slide hammer to uh, get that out. So what I did, I took the bearing puller, or bearing race puller, whatever you want to call it, and it opens up as you uh, adjust in. Of course, you've seen that when I did the rear wheel. And I'm thinking I should be able to if device a hole. Slide hammer it right out of there. Let's see if we can get that tight. Nope. I'll try it again though. Might have moved a little bit. really hate this piston won't come out. It's always one. I wouldn't get it. Still got a little heat to it. Nah, sliding by in there. not working so I guess what I'm gonna do is just spray some lube at it let it sit maybe that'll go down in there soak and free it up really hate that won't come out so this one over here is good to go but this other one stubborn so we'll just try spraying some lube there and let it sit for like a day or so, maybe it'll, it'll ease down around that piston and then we'll try and get it out of there.
still won't come out. One more try. Turn, I think. <clears throat> well, I thought it got to turn. Really hate to scar it up, but I can smooth it out. It's turning though. It's starting to come out of there. Well, it's turning, but it just some more lube in there. Probably gonna still have to buy a ruby uh, rebuild kit. Got that feeling. Got those O rings so hot. I mean, it's going to come out, but the O-rings are going to be shot. <laughs> oh, it came out. So it's finally out of there, so we should be able to... I guess you have to do one side at a time. Oh. Man, this thing is hot. Woo, 
That's hot. use my little slide hammer thing it's coming out on an angle it's hot though that one and it's super hot I guess we can use the slide hammer on this one Takes time and patience to do some stuff. Things are rusting in there pretty good. But if we can get it apart, at least we can get a rebuild kit. And uh rebuild the calipers. I have seen them where they won't come out at all. Still won't come out. There we go. We got that one out. Finally. Yeah. Our rings are still intact, but 
but one of them's tore a little bit right at the top. Uh, I think that's the wiper seal. It's right on top. But uh, we did get it out, so I'll see if I can resource a rebuild kit for these because um, I really don't want to put it back together and chance them locking up. I mean that one o-ring don't look too bad but or seal but I'll see if I can source it and if we can we'll probably just go ahead and just put a new seal kit to them. Kinda got that piston a little bit but I don't think uh, it goes down in there that far we can smooth that out. Kit might come with pistons. So anyway, we got that side done. I just got to break down the other side, probably do the same thing, heat it up, blow them out, and uh, so we'll go from there with it. Alright, so kind of went around the block on it. Uh, it started raining, so I brought it back and waited until it stopped raining. So grow pretty good uh, so that back tire has got a hump in it because it's dry rotted but um, I can't really just give it too much power because um, like I said that back tire is kind of lumpy when you're riding it it's got the whole bike shaking but I'll ride it for you guys and you guys can see how it runs and uh, and um, we'll go from there with it It's getting dark.
I'm gonna have to end up dropping the exhaust to uh, empty it out. With that being said, <clears throat> we'll try and address that oil leak a little bit later. I think to fix that oil leak, you have to actually take the same cover that the uh, clutch master cylinder is in. You have to pull that whole cover off and the shift shaft seal is also in there because it's just leaking down on the exhaust. Uh, I got a new key switch ordered for it. I took the other key switch to the locksmith and they couldn't make a key for it. They said it uh, had too much rust on the inside and uh, they couldn't make one. So we got uh, a new gas cap and key switch and I think the helmet lock. Uh, now those are off of a uh, Magna 700C. 85. I'm thinking the gas cap is just kind of oval shaped, but it still should bolt in these uh, holes here. And the key switch is the same. So we'll wait till those get here. Uh, it's going to take a couple days on that. I just wanted to go ahead and do a couple test ride videos, let you guys see that it does uh, run and drive because getting parts delivered by uh, mail is real slow so that's what took me so long to get this thing actually up and going because I was waiting on a lot of parts but uh, she looks pretty good with the uh, gas tank that don't match the rest of the bike <laughs> but uh, she rides pretty good got good power like I say I'm still getting some smoke coming out there, exhaust on the right hand side. And uh, it'll stop for a while and then when it gets hot, it really starts to burn. I'm probably going to drop the exhaust and empty it out. I just think it's some rust or some garbage in there. And then that oil will leak. That'll be something we'll have to work on later. Uh, but anyway, just a quick video of the bike actually on the road and riding uh, we still got to fix the light which I'm looking for one of those this one's garbage just, I took it loose and now it's just rotted and of course the gauge cluster don't work well that whining noise you heard was actually the speedometer making that whining sound I think it's the cable going into the speedo but it actually the hand moves but it just makes that whining sound when you go to slow down so I'll probably shoot some oil or something down it and let it sit that's what that <laughs> sound like sound like a turbo that's spooling up but uh but yeah that's it for now folks so hope y'all enjoyed the little test runs I did with it tried to catch uh, kind of when the traffic slowed down a little bit because we only got a brake light I got to find out why the tail light don't work too but just stay tuned it'll be more of the 700 and uh, y'all be safe out there like I can say thanks for all the comments and subscribers and uh, y'all have a good safe holiday which should be Thanksgiving so y'all have a good one, and uh, we'll move on to some more stuff later.